Ladies and gentlemen, Zen 5 is going to be an absolute performance monster when it comes to IPC games. Possibly one of the biggest IPC leaps we've seen in the Zen processor architecture's history. Now, if you cast your minds back to when the rumours of the first Zen architecture were really starting to surface on the internet, there were a lot of questions. Could AMD really fulfil these lofty goals that were being floated around? And the answer, of course, was yes. Not only did we see a big gain in terms of SMT performance, but honestly, AMD just really caught Intel with its pants down. And more recently, there has been a lot of backwards and forwards between the two companies. It's not really a secret that Zen 4 focused mostly on clock frequency gains over its predecessor, Zen 3. There were some small architectural tweaks here and there, but largely speaking, it was clock frequency as the order of the day. We've known for some time, thanks to numerous leaks and also some official slides from AMD, Zen 5 would take the opposite approach, focusing on IPC improvements instead. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the IPC gains that I've been hearing, some updates to the architecture, and a whole bunch more stuff besides. This is a paid partnership with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a fantastic platform which offers 100% online therapy, which means that therapy can be accessible and available when you need it. Seeking therapy can be scary, but for many people, they just need someone to talk to, and in those situations, therapy can be very helpful. Life can be very tough, but it's about how you approach the situation, and therapy can give you the tools you need. Some people simply don't suffer from anxiety or depression, they just need someone to talk to or just general advice. And that's where BetterHelp can also offer you a great solution. As I said earlier, when you are signing up to BetterHelp, it's 100% online, and you simply fill in several questions, and then their system will match you with a therapist who is fully credentialed. Click the link in our video description to get started. And not only does this support our channel, but allows you to get 10% off of your first month of therapy. And not to worry, if your match therapist isn't the right fit for you, you can switch at no additional cost to yourself. Therapy can be absolutely life-changing, and they have specialists for people who are suffering from anxiety, depression, or perhaps suffering from a loss or some type of trauma. So if you are struggling, get the help you need. Don't struggle in silence. Speak to a fully credentialed therapist with BetterHelp. Again, you can click the link in our video description, which is betterhelp.com slash redgaming. That's betterhelp.com slash redgaming to get started and get 10% off of your first month. Now, to get an obvious point out of the way first, I want to focus on Granite Ridge. So this is Ryzen 8000 for the desktop, which again will be on the AM5 platform. There will likely be some differences that will spot between Zen 5's uh, performance increases on the desktop versus the server. One reason for that is the TDP. The server chips, from what I've heard, will be um, a higher TDP versus their predecessors, whereas the TDP for AM5 remains constant. There will also be some IOD differences as well, of course, but I want to focus this video for a desktop audience narrowing the focus, picking our poison, if you will. So as a brief summary for the AM5 variant of Zen 5, the processors will retain 16 cores, 32 threads. We've seen this across multiple AMD generations at this point, and AMD have no reason to change it for Zen 5. As I also alluded to, the TDP is still 170 watts, although, of course, this will change based upon various settings in your BIOS and so on and so forth. The release date for Ryzen 8000, I'm hearing, is going to be Q2 2024, and the uh, Vcash variants of the chip will release later that same year, so let's say Q4 2024, or possibly Q1 2025. I've heard a little bit of mixed information, but pretty much roughly the same time schedule that we've seen between the vanilla chips and the Vcash chips from a couple of other generations at this stage. As bonus info, RDNA 4 will release one quarter after Ryzen 8000, so that's going to be some point in Q3. But remember, the high-end products for this are dead now, so for the high-end AMD launches, you're going to have to wait for RDNA 5, which I'm hearing is going to be roughly end of 2025. I've heard around six quarters, essentially, after the release of RDNA 4. Now, I'll go more into the architecture stuff later, but 
now we've established the very basics what's going on with the clock frequency and the performance several weeks ago i'd leaked uh, some benchmarks actually for different configurations of ryzen up to the flagship of 16 cores now the caveat here was this was not final retail silicon and of course agisa versions as well were not exactly something that you would ship to the end user in terms of clock frequency though at that point i was hearing that i'd basically been given a lot of mixed information some of my sources were telling me that they were expecting a small regression in clock frequency whereas others were coming back to say that on the final chips on the retail silicon they were expecting probably a bit of a modest bump maybe up to somewhere around six gigahertz or so depending again of course on core load now things are really starting to change and pretty much most of my sources are now coming back to me with largely similar messaging regression is inevitable thanks to a number of changes across the core and power consumption figures being the same 170 watts I've now heard that low to mid 5 gigahertz regression is probably going to be I've now heard that low to mid 5 gigahertz is probably quite likely at this stage. Clock frequencies for Ryzen in particular are very difficult to nail down as they vary so much with different workloads. You can see an example of this with the 7950X here from Tech Power Up as they test to boost clock frequencies. But basically, yeah, low to mid five gigahertz is quite likely. And another source tells me that basically a two to 300 megahertz drop at minimum is what they're probably uh, guessing. But uh, this honestly does make a lot more sense versus the conflicting information I was receiving about a possible raising clock frequency. But things are not bad because in terms of IPC, this is where things get much spicier. Slides in the past of released which basically state that single thread performance is going to be between high teens to mid 20 with the average being somewhere in the low 20 percent mark and some some sources telling me that 25 percent was more likely but now i'm starting to think that this figure is simply wrong i've had a few very good sources tell me now that this figure is under representing how zen 5 performs and the real performance number again single thread is around 30 percent in some conditions, the performance can actually be higher than that, and in some cases lower, but this seems to be rarely. Um, as speculation, I think the higher figure is probably with potential uh, heavy AVX workloads, given some of the changes that we've seen um, being incorporated in the chip. But yeah, of course, workloads are always going to vary anyway, but I've had more than one source I've heard what more than one source now tell me that 30% is an average single thread workload. Do you remember though that there is also a clock frequency regression? So perhaps final performance for the Ryzen chips again is going to be somewhere around the 25% on average. Now personally I am trying to temper my expectations somewhat. And I've told myself that around 20% IPC is where I'm personally going to be guessing. This is mostly so I'm not disappointed because, again, many of my sources have told me that the number is going to be higher. But I do think that having some level of modest expectation is important. But let's now start talking a general sense of some of the information and kind of go over this. So this is a new slide that I've put together. Again, some of this information could be wrong, but much of this now seems to be quite likely. IPC gains are between 20 to 30% single thread. Higher seems more likely according to sources, but I'm remaining skeptical, at least for now. Clocks receive a regression versus Zen 4, at least a couple of hundred megahertz plus. CCD is still going to be eight cores. Again, this is for the AM5 platform. SMT2, high confidence, AM5, as you probably know, this is almost a certainty at this point. The IOD is identical to Zen 4. Likely small to well pretty much meaningless memory speed improvements i've mid confidence on that but it makes sense given the iod um zen 5 will be for granite ridge so zen 5c is going to be for apu and server it seems very likely that we're going to see wider decoders based upon some slides amd themselves have released there's also going to be increasing load store bandwidth general improvements to the logic units new cpu instructions including fp16 avx 512 l1 caches seem larger um, there have been some slides which uh, sorry some benchmarks which have leaked which seem to indicate this is true l2 cache is still going to be one megabyte l3 cache potential changes i'm not certain 
Jim, or if, Jim over at Adore TV, excuse me, mentioned there's going to be some type of ladder structure on the cache. I can't verify this. I've been told that it's possibly true, but I can't verify it. So I'm just going to mention it here. Uh, there are probably some cache changes because, yeah, cache is just one of those things that always seems to change per chip. But again, I am not certain what those are. 16 cores, 32 threads, again for the desktop. TSMC's 4NM process, and as I mentioned a moment ago, the second quarter of 2024 will be the release date with late Q4 or Q1 the following year for the X3D variants. So there you have it, guys. Honestly, Zen 5 is shaping up to be absolutely a beast. And I'm going to be very interested to see just what the pricing strategy is for Zen 5 as well. Now, I have heard through the grapevine that AMD may actually be increasing the prices again, which isn't too surprising, but I've heard from a couple of people that the price gains could be kind of significant. As always with this stuff, we're going to have to wait and see because pricing isn't really decided this early. And of course, it's going to very much depend on what Intel actually managed to bring to the forefront. It'll be very intriguing to see what the benchmarks are like across numerous applications, not just with against Zen 4, but also against Intel. Because of course, we've spoken so many times now about some of the changes of uh, Arrow Lake, and I'll probably make a separate video really focusing on that pretty soon. But of course, there are some major changes in the way that Intel are going to be designing Arrow Lake. For example, hyper threading, if I can say the word, is whoop, it's out of there. Uh, for the performance cores, of course, not the E cores, as they've not had it. So, just in terms of how multi processor. Um, sorry, multi-threading will scale across different applications. It's going to be very intriguing. I've heard that uh, Arrow Lake as well is going to have quite a clock frequency regression, maybe much more significant than even Zen 5. One thing is absolutely for certain, though. I think as PC gamers, we're pretty much spoiled for choice at the moment, as even if you do want to stick to AM4, honestly... There are a lot of really great products on the AM4 platform, especially if you go with like a Vcash variant, which is going to absolutely be more than fine for gaming for some time now. With that said, let me know your thoughts and opinions on Zen 5 and what you would like to do. And secondly, will you pick up Zen 5 Vanilla or will you wait for the X3D uh, CPUs instead? With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.